Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture for us today sets before us John the Baptist's tragic death. Indeed, after being imprisoned by King Herod for over a year in that dungeon, he's beheaded on Herod's birthday. And like we talked about in the little sermon today, really what we see in our scripture is two ways set before us. On the one hand, the way of Herod and Herodias, and on the other side, the way of John the Baptist. And as we meditate on the scripture today, take to heart the word of God before us today, may we seek to follow that way, that better way that John the Baptist proclaimed and lived. But a little history lesson. Who is this King Herod? Usually the King Herod we're most familiar with is Herod the Great. That's the King Herod we hear about at Christmas time. Of course, he didn't follow the Lord's way. He heard that This king of the Jews had been born. He responded by killing all the baby boys in and around Bethlehem in hopes that he could also put to death this newborn king. Well, our scripture for today, it's not Herod the Great. It's Herod the Great's son, Herod Antipas. But unfortunately, Herod Antipas, this King Herod, followed in the evil and ungodly ways of his father. First, he followed in the way of sexual immorality. You see, he was married, but then he had an affair with his sister-in-law. His brother, Philip's wife, Herodias. Now you may wonder, Herodias, I wonder if she changed her name when she married into the family. Nope. For you see, Herodias was a granddaughter of King Herod the Great. You with me? In other words, she was married to her uncle Philip until she had an affair with her other uncle, Antipas, and then they both divorced their spouses, married each other. So Herod Antipas. His way is the way of sexual immorality, of adultery and incest. But the way of this King Herod is also the way of preserving his power, regardless of the cost. So we see that playing out in our scripture today. It's his birthday. And because he knows he needs his army commanders and his generals and the wealthy folks and the leading people and business people of the land to support him so that he can remain in power, he invites them all to his palace for his birthday. He wines and dines them so that they will keep on supporting him. You can see that King Herod is all about keeping and preserving his power because he has no issue at all with using his stepdaughter, who also happens to be his great niece, to come in and dance provocatively for those that are gathered at the party. For her to be nothing more than just an object of enjoyment. 
then there's Herodias. She too is all about power. That's why she married her own uncle. And when she realized that she would have more power, more influence, by marrying another uncle, did it. So John the Baptist, as this faithful messenger of God, as this faithful prophet of God, does what prophets are supposed to do, and that is speak the truth. And so John repeatedly goes to King Herod and tells him what he has done is wrong, that it's wrong for him to have his brother's wife. So the way of Herodias is the way of hating the messenger. She holds a grudge against John. So she convinces her new husband to arrest John and put him in prison. That's not enough for her. She wants John the Baptist dead. And yet, even though King Herod has chosen the ungodly way, still Herod is wise enough to know that John John is a holy and righteous man. And so he refuses to honor Herodias' request. Refuses to put John the Baptist to death. But the opportunity comes that night of Herod's birthday. Again, Herodias doesn't object. When her husband calls in her own daughter to dance seductively for the guests. By this time, Herod and those who are with him are drunk. Yes, walking in the way of drunkenness. So in his drunken stupor, not only does he call in his stepdaughter to dance, but then when she's finished with her dancing, makes this promise that he will give to her up to half of the kingdom because of the way she's danced. Now that's obviously the alcohol talking. Because first off, Herod couldn't give away any of his kingdom. The kings, the rulers, the territory they ruled, that was all decided and determined by the Roman emperor. And we know Herod is all about the power, the authority. He wouldn't give any of that away. But it's the alcohol doing the talking and the acting at this point. So he speaks, says, I'll give you half of the kingdom. And so after consulting with her mother, Herod's wife, Radius seizes on the opportunity. The request is made that John the Baptist be put to death. Not just that, but in the most gruesome of ways that this platter that was to be used to serve the fine delicacies at this banquet was now the platter that would hold the severed head of John the Baptist. We hear about everything that commenced that night. Make us upset. 
It should make us uncomfortable. It was terrible. But yet when we step back, yes, we see Herod's and Herodias' ways, how ungodly they are. But the ways of the world really haven't changed. The way of the world is still about sexual immorality. You would be hard-pressed to find a television show or a movie that promotes and encourages people ordering their marriage and family life by God's design. Instead, the world preaches, engage in all types of sexual immorality. If it feels good, do it. If you're having problems in your marriage, if you become desirous of someone else, you're not happy, you don't have to remain faithful to your vows. Fine. Find someone else. Certainly, the world is all about power and authority. Doing whatever it takes to keep the power, to keep the authority, to gain more power and authority and influence. The world, it's all about hating the messenger. See it with our cancel culture. If you don't like what someone is saying, cancel them. Silence them. Even when that person in love is trying to point out how you may be hurting yourself or others. Our world says not only despise the message, but despise the messenger. Our world certainly promotes way of drunkenness. The world would say, yeah, it's your birthday. You should get drunk. Then getting drunk on your birthday becomes getting drunk every weekend. Becomes getting drunk all the time. There's a better way. A better way than the way of Herod and Herodias. A better way than the way of the world. And that is the way that John the Baptist both proclaimed and lived. The way not of living your life, doing whatever you feel like doing, not making your life into this huge soap opera. Oh, it's the way, the way of repentance. It's the Lord's way of understanding and believing that God and his word is the best way. And that when we wander from that way, when we ignore the do not enter signs of the world and its ways, that when the word of God confronts us, or when someone loves us enough to point out that we are straying, that we are going down the wrong way, That we heed that word. As the better way is the way that John proclaimed, the way of repentance. Not the way of hating the messenger. Not the way of making excuses for our actions or our inaction. Acknowledging. Acknowledging our sin. Acknowledging 
that we have wandered from the way and then looking to the one that John the Baptist faithfully proclaimed throughout his ministry. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Yes, Jesus is your Lamb. That perfect Lamb offered on the cross for all your sins. For every single time that you and I have wandered from the Lord's way. In today, you receive that forgiveness. Forgiven by the Lamb of God. Do you hear that word of forgiveness? As you partake of this banquet. This banquet of forgiveness. Salvation. And as you receive the gift of that forgiveness from the Lamb of God, the Holy Spirit works mightily in and through that forgiveness so that you, as John proclaimed throughout his ministry, bear the fruit of repentance so that you have the desire to walk in the Lord's ways. When the world comes tempting, saying this is a better way, and see it for what it is. Oh, the world is going to say, sleep around, gratify your desire, seek as much power in any way that you can get it. Get drunk all the time. Don't listen to anyone. That's the way of joy. That's the way of blessing. But it's not. The dead end. A dead end of regret and remorse and sorrow and loneliness and isolation. There's a better way. The way of repentance. The way of receiving forgiveness. The way of living in the power of of that forgiveness of sin. Now that is the better way. I can tell you right now, it's not always the easier way. Look at John the Baptist. He was hated for proclaiming the truth. He spent the last year of his life in a dungeon, died a terrible death. But look at him now. John the Baptist sees Jesus, the Lamb of God. Beholds his Savior face to face in heavenly glory. Not always easy to follow this better way. The way that John the Baptist proclaimed and lived, God's way. But God's way is the best way. The best way, because the way that John proclaimed is Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. So we follow our Savior where he leads. Yes, looking to him for forgiveness when we stray. Seeking the Spirit's help. Like we said in the confession of sins today. That we would delight in his commands and walk in his ways. as our Lord and Savior continues to lead us on that better way, that best way, through all the temptations and trials of this world, on that way to that glorious life, he is prepared for us. Amen. Sing hymn 346, the first and last stanzas. <laughs>